Thank you, sir. Give everyone a couple more minutes to get in. Hey, Ladana, hope you got my response yesterday. I think you did. here today. Hello, hello. Dr. Z. Hey, Dr. Zeger. Hi, everyone. Have you had fun today? You can share. It was a great day. Good deal. It's going to get better. I think I was in four dissertation proposal meetings today. Man. You have a earned lot. your keep. Yeah, I definitely did today. <laughs> Let's see, Steven's here. Hi, Susan. I'm just looking for those that are doing the dissertation proposals today and tomorrow. <laughs> I see you. Let's see, who else? Christine did hers today. Yeah, Christine. Uh-huh. And Steven has his tomorrow. Uh, let's see, who else? No one else defending a proposal here yet, I don't think. No. <laughs> defending your proposal is like a double-edged sword. We always say we have good news and bad news. The good news is you're approved. The bad news is you're approved. <laughs> Careful what you wish for. Uh-huh, <laughs> you got a dissertation to write. <laughs> so it's kind of how it goes. Yeah, I hear you. <laughs> How's Florida? I'm having storms a lot lately. I had the blinds in my office, just I just toned them down because it washes you out on video pretty much. Uh, but we've got these things where like it's sunny and beautiful and all of a sudden then it turns like black and then the whole sky, it's just typical. <laughs> in Jersey actually same thing yeah same thing Crazy. like these spotty showers with dark clouds suddenly and then sunshine and then clouds yeah kind of weird Amazing. weird stuff yep well it's a minute after and I don't want to jam everybody on a Wednesday night it is hump day <laughs> hour two of our extravaganza and then Friday we'll tie it all up we have a special surprise at the end of this today I don't want to give it away but it involves with one word, free. That's all I'm gonna say. I'll have to wait, the suspense will build over this next hour and then we'll get to it. Uh, anyhow, glad to have you back uh, with me. Uh, day one was a whirlwind. I am sure you're probably drowning in TRRS and TRS and ABC and CBS and any other thing you can think of and I wouldn't blame you because it is gets a little geeky um, and it will soon make a lot more sense to you and you'll be wowing your friends with connection jargon that they don't even know and uh, be the hero. So um, hopefully if you felt overwhelmed, then I did a great job. So um, anyway, uh, we are uh, going to uh, open up with a little bit of Q&A because we closed pretty quickly at the end. I am going to take a few moments to kind of revisit the last few frames from day one just briefly and then get on to connecting the pieces because I want everyone to understand how it all comes together so that on Friday when we get to play, it'll be fun. And uh, 
or you know, or a get fun. Uh, so we'll we'll do those kinds of things. So, uh, gee, if you want to open it up for questions, we can. Um, sure. Does anybody have questions regarding yesterday's extravaganza? <laughs> extravaganza. <laughs> You can uh, post it right in the chat, and if you want to, I guess, ask directly, I can unmute you. Yeah. Raise your hand. and Yeah, if you want to raise your hand, there's a function. God, I'm not that good. Come on, guys. <laughs> <laughs> hey, all right, we got a... Gary's got a hand up. Yay. All right. Let me see. Which, which was the student? I can unmute him. There you go, Jerry. Oh. Hi, how's everybody doing? Great. Thanks for joining. Um, yeah. Um, so the connector that you sent was obviously why we filled the survey. So it was specific to the to my Android. And so I was wondering because I didn't have a chance to uh, test it myself. And so I figured I'd just ask you directly. Um, the the input jack on the the traditional audio. Uh, Jack, I had a little piece break off in there, and so I have no access to it. Could I use the adapter? Well, actually, technically not the adapter. I don't want to get quizzed. But the um, the dogger or the Doppler or whatever you call that little thingy. The doggle. Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. the, the doggle, right? Yeah. Could I use the doggle in lieu of uh, the fact that my audio jack has a broken piece of cord, whatever the size is? Yep. Yeah, definitely. So the headphone jacks sometimes get compromised. Uh, a lot of times, even without breaking stuff off in it, um, you can end up uh, having it get uh, kludged because it just gets wore out. Um, so uh, certainly the connector at the bottom, which is your power port, um, uh, can be used. Now, uh, in recent handsets on Androids, particularly Androids, um, the uh, uh, the connector is usually USB-C. Uh, older Androids use a micro USB connector, uh, and there, there are connectors out there for that. But if yours is I a, have a C. Do you have a C? Okay, perfect. And I think I specified that, but I didn't open the little box you guys sent me. Yeah. Because when I saw the macaroni and the marshmallows, I didn't see all the other really cool stuff in there that I saw today. So there you go. thank you. And, and then... Um, I just wanted to say thank you for all that cool stuff. <laughs> my pleasure, my pleasure. And we're going to have webinars about all of the cool stuff in there, so you'll get to learn more about everything. Yeah, yeah it's kind of like Christmas. So, uh, and, get, and getting gear, if you get gear crazy like me and Laura, you're going to really be in trouble. So, <laughs> anyway, but um, so just, just a point to clarity for everyone that's listening is, it's, is it Barry who I just talked to? Who's no, Jerry. Uh, Jerry? Jerry. Oh, G. sorry, Jerry. Jerry okay. with a G. G. Okay, Jerry. Um, his his phone happens to have a headphone jack in it, and uh, it's 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 fluted or or flat, fouled where it can't get a, a plug into it. So uh, he asked, "Can I use the connector at the base where you charge with?" Um, and for Apple people, that would be like your Lightning port. And the answer is yes. There are. Uh, some iPhones out there that still have headphone jacks on some older models that also have lightning for, for their um, uh, power, of course. And so you can use either or, or port. Now, just so that you guys can understand technically, the, the jack, the headphone jack, is what they call an analog jack. The bottom jack, where it powers, is also a connector jack, but it, it is a digital connection. Um, so many people that are really big on audio love the digital connection, Jerry, because it's so much more pristine. Uh, not many people know this. Uh, sometimes you can barely hear it, but if you've got a pair of headphones on, you're going, wow, that sure sounds bright. So it was meant to be, basically. Absolutely. It was meant to be. Yeah. Yep. So for the kind of video that you guys are going to end up shooting going forward, you're going to want to use the digital jack. No sin if you um, use just it. To, just because I, I was worried because with the stuff that was in the box, I get a sneaking suspicion that mobility is kind of, a, you know, one of the, the components. And I was worried and, and I was on the phone today um, trying to talk to Verizon. But then when I saw the video, I'm glad I saw the video before I bought a new phone. 
<laughs> there you go. There you go. Um, one question I want to bring up that came up uh, after yesterday's uh, session was uh, from uh, Michael. And uh, Michael, I forgot Michael's last name. Uh, do you remember, Laura? You know, yeah. Yeah. And his, uh, he had a really interesting question is that when he plugs his uh, Movo lavalier mic, this one that you all got, okay, um, into his computer, the computer sees it as a microphone, but it also sees it as a headphone and it defeats the speakers or any kind of audio output because it's, it sees that connection uh, in duplicity. It sees it in two, two different ways. And the, the recommendation I made to him is really two. One's kind of crude and, and rudimentary and the other one is more elegant is that you would go into your control settings and just set the microphone as your recording instrument, in this case, the Movo lavalier that you guys received, this guy. And then the output would not go to this, but it would go to external microphone or to a headset or, or some other audio output because uh, this thing doesn't do audio out. It just does capture. Uh, but again, the computer gets confused when it gets connected that it's seeing once you put this jack in, it sees it as both. So that's a way to work around it. The other workaround is if you're recording with this and you want to hear the playback and people do this all the time, they just pull it out. And then the defaults, it defaults to, to its standard audio uh, output to uh, internal speakers or external speakers, however you had it set up. So that's, that was a good question because some people get frustrated. They're going, is this thing really recording? Because when I hit playback, I, I can see myself talking, but I don't hear anything. And it did record. It's just that this thing uh, is blocking the output. Uh, if that makes sense. Okay. Uh, any qu other questions? Let's see. Do you see anything on there, G, that we need to look at? I think uh, that might be it. If anybody has any questions, uh, I guess maybe we could reserve for later or should we yeah. continue? Or Yeah, if you guys want to write in the chat box during this session, like you just remembered something from yesterday or, or something you're seeing now, um, you know, just go ahead and ask the question. We give a bonus round points at the end for this. I'm not saying again what that might be. Okay, let me, uh, we have fixed the crazy slide thing, I think, uh, and it was Laura's fault. So, you know, it happens, but uh, it wasn't Laura's fault. It was my fault. All right, so here we go. We're going to go share screen and get this party started. One more one sec. Gee, do we look good? Yes, Buzz, we do. Thumbs up. It's great. Thumbs Incredible. Up. <laughs> yeah, isn't it amazing technology? I'm just I'm wowing myself. Um, anyway, so connecting the pieces is today's deal, and um, we are definitely going to uh, do that. Uh, we did the recap. Um, I tried to do as much general confusion as I possibly can. I think I've achieved that. Um, uh, I did want to kind of go a little bit into lens and cases because I get asked this question a lot because some people don't have the newest gear, like they don't have a brand new iPhone 11 or they don't have a brand new Google phone. And in those cases, um, no pun intended, uh, they, uh, you can buy a case like what's pictured in this uh, photo and these lenses are all interchangeable. And what they do is they twist on in like a half turn into that port that you see at the top and it couples with the optics that are on the back of your phone. And it gives wide angle, telephoto, uh, and other types of, of capabilities, macro, uh, those types of things. Uh, for people that don't have uh, the money to buy a case, these cases are like $39 or 40 bucks for the case. The lenses are expensive because they're glass. So like for the wide angle that you're seeing, the big lens, it's like 113 bucks or something. And then telephoto is like 79. But again, if you start really getting into this, these lenses will mean something to you. But for now, you can shoot with what you've got. You'll be fine. Uh, but clip-on lenses is, have been a big business for a few years now. And for people that don't want to spend the money for some of these more expensive and elaborate things, you can actually get one that kind of pinches on and, and, and covers, the uh, again, the optical port on the back of your phone to enhance it with wide angle or some kind of telephoto or macro capability. Those are usually the three um, uh, typical uh, settings. And I, I have it as macro. It's, it's macro. 
It's a typo. I'm just batting a thousand with these slides, aren't I? Um, but it's really good because people like to, they, when they see a good wide shot, they go, hey, how did you get all that in? Because here's the problem, and you guys know this to be true, is that when you uh, shoot a, a shot and you don't get everybody in, or you're having to go way, way, way back to get everyone in, the problem is that you can't see anybody. They look like just stick figures. Wide angle lenses let you get up close and yet shoot super wide so that you get that wide shot that, that you really want to get everybody in. So there is a purpose uh, to doing wide angle. If there was one lens that I would tell all of you to lean on, whether you've got it built into your phone or you buy it separately, it would be a wide angle. Telephoto, eh, not so much. Uh, macro, or Mako as I've got it, um, can, you, you know, unless you're shooting little flowers or some other kind of real tiny, small thing, I wouldn't really worry about it. Um, but again, uh, this company called Moment is the one I, I recommend quite a, a bit because it's just a, a really clean implementation. And when I go live, I'll just show you how it snaps on pretty easily. It's cool. Um, uh, tripods, we talked a little bit about these. Um, I think they're essential, uh, and I, I, the middle one you see, which is the small Monfrotto is the name of the company, um, that one is a really cool, easy-to-use stabilization of your, of your, your rig. Um, and, you know, because if you want to set it down on a table when you're not using it, it's nice to have little feet that you can put, put it down on. And when you pick it up, those three legs actually collapse into a handle, so they become like, I don't know if you guys can see my camera here, but... Um, it becomes like thin like that, where you can just grab it like this. And uh, it's just a really easy, easy implementation. Um, uh, another one that I've got is this little small guy. And a lot of people like some of these small ones just because they have the ability to use a small rig uh, tripod like this just to kind of stick stuff up on. They're really super inexpensive. I think they're like five or six bucks. but. Again, it's better than plunking your, your gear down on the table. It's nice to have a little bit of elevation. This actually has a ball joint type of uh, uh, deal right here where you can actually turn this little lever and rotate it around and give it an angle or, or uh, move it around a little so it's not just straight static. Um, and it folds, the legs fold up like that so you can easily put it in a bag uh, or throw it in a backpack or whatever. But again, it's worth the extra money to kind of get these uh, types of uh, stands. Um, way in the back here, uh, and I'm going to move this microphone because I'm on another mic here. I wanted to show you, um, uh, this is a monopod. And a monopod is, again, one of these straight, it has feet like these that, that actually stabilize it. And a lot of times when people shoot by themselves, they go, hey, what kind of rig can I get or stabilization can I get? that if I'm by myself, because usually typical monopods are a straight pod, you got to hold them like a broomstick and, and there's nothing that stabilizes them. Well, in the last few years, they've added this, these nice little feet that pop out and this thing has an actual self-centering kind of uh, style. So at the base, when you put it down, you can actually balance it so that you can let go of it. And it's really, it's really handy to have. So if you do shooting, by yourself, you don't have a camera person with you. You don't have a standard tripod. You don't want to bring that around. Monopods are are a, are a nice uh, way to go. And I I just saw one on sale. They're about a little over a hundred. If you want a good one, I've seen some for seventy nine eighty nine, and they're pretty decent. But again, you want one if you were doing this kind of shooting with these feet that that blossom out. They fold up. Uh, if you push this button, they they fold up like that, uh, and then they snap into place like this. Uh, the last tripod which you don't have to spend a fortune on these. Um, turn this up just a sketch so you can hear me okay. Um, is, um, is this guy, and this guy is a fluid head tripod. Now this is a full featured tripod. And the reason it's a fluid head is that it easily uh, moves around. Like you can, it floats actually, like it's just so smooth when it moves around. And it's in, because there's fluid in it, that gives it that buttery kind of pan and, and feel. Now, these have come down dramatically in price. They've uh, traditionally been, been fairly expensive microphones, but um, you can, or, or I'm sorry, tripods, but they, you can uh, really get them for a lot less money these days. But the key thing you're looking for is a fluid head uh, type of implementation. And again, it's very 
uh, smooth. So when you're panning around, because on the on the cheaper ones you, uh, that are plastic, you'll hear them crackle and make different noises that echo into your audio. And people are like, what is that sound? And uh, it's just the creakiness of a plastic cheap tripod. So again, if you're shooting and you don't want those kinds of of uh, echoes or, or sounds, uh, go for something fluid head and shop around on Amazon and or B and H. Those are the two places that uh, Laura and I buy a lot of a lot of gear from. They're really great on returns if you don't like it. Uh, Amazon obviously is king of returns. You don't have to do all any next to anything with them. Um, B and H is a little stickier, but but still pretty good. Um, but again, look for fluid head if you're going to do this like in earnest, like you're really going to get into it. Um, but for now, these different suggestions will help you get started. And again, the one that I really, really recommend would be this guy. Um, and use, I use them a lot. A lot, of, a lot of pro guys use them a lot just to have it handy. Uh, the Gorillapod, uh, which is the other guy. Um, I think this particular model that you see in the photo that I've got, um, you can get kind of nutty with these. These can get expensive, like 79 69 something like that a little bit more if you want to buy a whole bunch of different gear for the ball head for the top um people like these a lot they and they fold all down they collapse all down and you can make them do all kinds of crazy things the wraparound stuff um very very versatile very rugged so if you're outdoors shooting stuff uh this is a good rig to get hey buzz we have two questions the first is um i think with regard to the lens um, the lenses, I'm not quite sure, but Juan was asking about, um, does it have to be an iPhone 11? You have to have an iPhone 11. Great question. And correct me, Juan, if I'm wrong with regard, I think it was with regard to the lenses. Yeah. I'm gonna stop sharing. I'm going to go live here so I can show you guys. So the answer to the question is, um, let me get the case. So this is the plastic case right here. Okay. And uh, these guys at moment make cases for iPhone 10, 11, 12 is not here yet, um, but uh, they make them in all different configurations. You have to be kind of specific about the phone that you're you're using because they custom make these. So um, so the cutaway for the new iPhone 11, now everyone goes, well, why would I want a wide angle lens for an iPhone 11? It already has a wide angle. Well, that wide angle, I believe, is only 13 millimeter on the wide, and the lens, um, this guy right here, this lens is an 18 millimeter, and that difference, that five millimeter difference, is huge. Um, and and typically, what this, how cool this is, I'm going to show you guys. Here's the case. Pretend your phone's inside. Um, you literally take and line up two lines, and then twist it like this, like a half turn, and then it it couples the lens to the case. Okay, and then this lines, I you know, almost like on a like suction type of thing, right to the back lens of your camera phone of your smartphone so there's no the the reason that this is so tight and this company does this so well is because if you had any like looseness or gapping or any of that kind of weird stuff where it's not really super snug then you get what's called moraine or flaring uh where light kind of seeps in and light lights gets into everything unless it's completely pitch and and so you need to have something that's tight like this and so again, this is a, a great implementation of a white. Now what's great about it is, is that when you're done shooting, you're back to your phone. I mean, you don't, you don't have to worry about, in this case is very low profile, nothing bulky, very durable, um, you know, terrific. Comes in a couple of colors. I think they, they do like a walnut kind of inlay here, but um, they're really good company. The lens is the big, this is like 39 bucks. So the, the case isn't, isn't expensive. So again, depending on the kind of phone you have um, and the capability you're looking for, uh, you go to moment.com and uh, look at all the different lenses and cases they've got. And um, I think they have education pricing, Laura. I'm not, I think you have to ask for it and they give you a discount. Um, hey, Buzz, how does that compare to those lenses that just snap right on to your phone? Yeah, good question. The the lenses, and I, I thought I had one here, but I, I, I don't, but the lenses that typically uh, are a pinch squeeze type of lens where it, it you, you squeeze it and it, and it just kind of uh, clips onto your phone port and sometimes it'll the clip will even go onto your the screen of your phone, won't hurt it or anything, but it has to have that leverage to kind of squeeze it on there. They're a little bit tricky because if you get them lined up right, because you want to make sure that the lens alignment is perfect between the 
back end of the clip on and your lens on your camera phone. Um, and, and it can be, you can get that moraine, that flaring sometimes if it doesn't sit exactly tight. And sometimes it's a crapshoot because it, everyone's got cases and these things are designed, which is weird, uh, to, for a phone that has no case. And you're like, well, who doesn't have a case? I mean, there's some purists that don't, I get it. But, but you know, if, if just, if you drop it once, you're goosed, you know? So everyone's got a case is the point. And so some of these clip-ons, you have to really be careful because they're inexpensive, but they will tell you in very small print, it will not fit over a case because they can't, they can't um, compensate for the thickness of the case because that lens has got to, got to sit like flush like this, like right up against your, your lens on your camera. So it's a great question. So the, the cheap clip-on ones, um, some are really great, but, uh, but you gotta really be careful on what you buy. We also had a question with regard to the tripods. So can the tripod that people have for their regular cameras be used for their cell phones? And I think there might be a modification that's available to do that. Well, the simple answer is, and it's a good one, is that uh, we learned on uh, yesterday, on Tuesday, uh, about this little port, quarter 20. And it's the standard mount for, for everything in the AV business, which is a blessing. So um, the answer is, is that the phone, when put in your, your, your Lonzi case that, that we got you, um, will mount on any tripod, any tripod at all. Uh, now tripods, uh, usually have a, a, a male female kind of a coupler uh, one slides out and you you actually screw it to the bottom of your frame here and then it slides on to the the tripod itself um, unlike the uh, the little this little Monfrotto which has just a quarter 20 screw um, the the other uh, standard tripod has again a sleeve that you slide it slides on to the the base mount of the tripod but, but the simple answer to the question is any tripod will work with the setup that you have for mounting this. So don't, if you've got a tripod and you're thinking, I'm already done, you are. You're ready to go. Ready to go. Um, what do you think about the ones? Okay, that's, just, that's the other one. Okay, I just want to make sure I'm not I think we're all set with our questions. We can keep moving. Okay, good. Um, so lighting is the next thing. Uh, as I mentioned yesterday, uh, video gobbles up light. It likes light. Uh, and it's almost a double-edged sword in saying that because sometimes you can have too much light and it washes people out. So depending on uh, skin tone and everything else, you know, you've got to be kind of careful with the lighting. And uh, what you're going to learn that's going to help you, so I'm not telling you to go buy lights. I'm, I'm not saying that. What you're going to find is in, in this application, we're going to just talk about it briefly at the end of, of this session, uh, Filmic Pro, uh, which is the app that we're encouraging you to get for Android or for iPhone. It is a pro-style app, but it is for newbies, for anybody. And when you start using this app, you're going to flip out because it does some really remarkable things. And you can just use your finger to attenuate, uh, you know, both a uh, video, uh, you know, f-stop with a, you know, how much light is let in, how much light is not let in. And then also it locks the focus. Uh, it does some really remarkable things, but on the lighting side, um, if you've ever been in a, in a room that has nothing but fluorescent lights, typically the, the way video interprets that is it puts a brackish kind of almost yellowish tinge on everything. And you're like, I swear this room did not look like this, but this is the way video sees it. Not how we see it with our eyes, but how video sees it. Um, it's very sensitive to it. In fact, it's probably reading it better than we are. So w with, the, with the app, you can actually um, attenuate for the type of different Kelvin or light, light temperature uh, with your finger. It's really cool. I mean, you know, when you do it, you don't have to be a rocket scientist. Just take your finger and there's like a circle and you just kind of move it around and you can watch your camera on your phone darken or lighten. And then you're thinking, well, I don't need a lighting unit. And you're right, you don't. But there are some cases where you absolutely do, even with that attenuation, you, you still need a light. Now, I'm just gonna show you three quick, simple lights. Um, and guess what, guys? It uses a cold shoe adapter. Remember that from yesterday? Yeah, Buzz, you're the best trainer. Um, it, it fits right here at the top, slides right in, and then screws down so that you have a nice lighting unit that sits here. It has a nice big fat battery on the back. This thing I think I paid, 
I think 79 bucks lower, something like that. And maybe something like that, 85, um, came with a charger and it, and it, it's, it, it'll put plenty of light on your, on whoever you're shooting. Um, and it, and it does a good fill. So you could do maybe, I don't know, 15, 10 to 15 feet of light throw from this, which is a lot. Um, if you even need it. Now, sometimes if you do direct lighting, it washes people out again, too much light. Uh, so you can actually tip it back and tilt it to kind of almost have it bounce off the ceiling. Really cool the way they put like a double jointed kind of connector right here to do that kind of thing. Um, again, if you're shooting a lot of video indoors at night uh, or indoors period, this might be the, the thing you want. Uh, another one, this runs on AA batteries. Uh, this is another cool uh, light. Now this one has a really kind of cool thing. The other one had buttons. This one has a nice uh, analog knob. You can turn it on and then turn it and dim it or brighten it depending on how, how it looks. So between using Filmic and this, if you have a lighting problem, I'd love to know about it because this sucker will fix it. I mean, it really, really will. And again, these can mount quarter 20, put a little adapter on it, slides on, it's money. And then just use the knob just to dial it into whatever you think you need. Um, Simple, last but not least, these cubes look little, but they're mighty. Um, they have a cold shoe adapter, yay. And they slide right on here like that, okay. Now, these are inexpensive. I think these are like, um, I don't know if you and I price these, Laura, but I think these are, they, they're rechargeable. They have a little lithium battery in them, which is cool because they don't have to worry about a battery. Just got to charge them. Uh, but they, um, they throw a lot of light, LED. It has like seven steps, so you can have like dim, brighter, Brighter, bright, 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 and then brightest, and it, it, it'll really fill a room. Um, I think these were around 29, something like that, 39 bucks, something like that. They're not a heck of a lot, but if you want to play with a lighting thing before you kind of get the bigger ones, go with this and see if it, if it does right. The first thing we do, again, not pushing lighting here, try the app and, and attenuate with your finger, and it, you might be, it might be money right there. What's this say? I have that cube. Okay, Susan's got the cube. Um, the cameras, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, yeah, you can actually, uh, she made a good point. She goes, I love that cube. It's like old time cameras from the 70s. And it is. In fact, you can actually have people, people actually do this sometimes. They turn it down to make it brackish, to have that kind of, you know, dated patina kind of finish. It's just a video thing. That's the cool thing about video. So if you guys are shooting video, We've really gotten away from all the fancy stuff. It's all hard cuts when you see the editing. Um, it, it, it's, it's just about really shooting great, tight, warm shots. You know, people will complain. They're like, oh, like I'll use uh, uh, or, or, or Juan or, or Susan, or any of the members on, on this call, it, is that if you get close enough, somebody goes, oh, Susan, come on, get back. You're, you're crowding me. Don't listen to them because when you shoot the shot, you want to be tight. You want to be tight. You know, they'll be complaining about their wrinkles and everything, but they want to be tight because it evokes emotion. It shows emotion. So that's another reason why you want wide angle so that you can get up in close, get a nice wide shot. And as they cry, you'll see the tears come down. But, uh, you know, once you get through that, uh, you know, it, it really is something. So, um, again, play. Don't get lighting until you really need it. Get something cheap like this. Um, and uh, Buzz, What is that called again, please? This one... I think they call it the cube. I, I'll get more data on it for you. I don't have it right in the, but I'll find there's I'll like include field notes for everyone. Yeah, I'll put, I'll put it in my field notes. Isn't that great? Field notes are fantastic because I author them. No, I mean, uh, it's just fun because then it, all the questions and stuff. In fact, I made you extra field notes. Um, Yesterday, um, I don't, I forget if it was Susan or somebody else on the call. Um, they asked about the microphone flag that, that go around, you know, handheld. Uh, so I've got all of that and way more for you um, today uh, that's all prepped and ready to go. So um, you'll have that. All right, let's uh, go back to this wonderful presentation of mine. I think I've covered all the, oh, uh, one thing I did want to, do before I go to screen share one second. Oh, I got you guys here. Um, just, I know I'm wearing the audio thing out. You'll have to forgive me. But um, again, with these things with uh, uh, the guys at Rode, I had somebody ask me uh, today, unrelated to our team, our group here, about if you had money, what would you buy? 
And I said, you know, almost without a shadow of a doubt, even though I love shotgun mics, I would buy these guys uh, because uh, this little implementation that um, that the uh, the guys at Rode did um, were the the piece. I'm going to pull it off here. Hang on. It slides into this like that, okay, and then it covers with this, so it's like man on the street. Hey, how you doing? You know, and and so what they did is they took a lapel like, you know, lavalier type of thing and put it on the end of a, a $29, it's 29 bucks, a stick like this. And then they put a little windsock, you know, remember we call these things windsocks, this foam thing. And now you've got, you've got not only the ability to do a lavalier, but you've got the ability to do that man on the street thing. Um, it just, and there's other kinds of cool things that there's like five hacks on, on YouTube that of, of guys that just have done some really crazy out of the box stuff with this. So if you're scraping money together thinking, okay, what in the world would I want to buy? I think Laura and I would testify. This is like one of the best investments to make because it's just, it's, it just works. And, and whether you're pro or new, like some of you guys, the pros are raving about it. They're just going, this is the best thing I've seen since, you know, slice bread or something. Okay. I'll clip it back on just in case I need. Okay. That's it. Just had to get that off my chest. <laughs> oh, Buzz, uh, we have a question from Denise. You should yeah. want to know uh, what that was called. Hey, Denise. Uh, sorry, that is called the uh, Rode, that's R-O-D-E, Wireless Go. And guess what? It's in the new field notes I did for you. You don't even have to write it down. Gave you links to click on. You can watch videos about it, uh, all that kind of stuff, um, and learn all about the different things that they're doing with, uh, but Rode, R-O-D-E, they're an Australian company. Um, sound like a poster boy for those guys, but they, they just, you buy the stuff, it just works and it's really good. Um, like you see me wearing this one right here and it's connected to my sound system. So anyway, it's good stuff. You won't regret it. And by the way, no batteries. Uh, it, it does use a battery. It's an internal battery. It has a lithium battery in it, but USB-C charging. So the same USB-C charger that say Jerry, you used with your, your phone can charge these, uh, you know, easy peasy. They charge really quickly. They last all day. I mean, they really last all day. They're really good. So again, if you're looking for a super lav, uh, man on the street microphone and beyond, this is the thing that will, it'll be the best 199 you spent. Trust me. Um, okay. That's that. Let's go. I don't want to do the sharing. Okay, and got to click the word share buzz. There you go. <laughs> it's amazing. All right, am I back on? Good. Okay. Um, all right, so your gear, um, as uh, Jerry mentioned, you opened the box with all the foam peanuts and everything, and you guys got all this stuff. You've got the L Ulanzi Pro Video Rig, um, pound for pound, probably the best rig, very durable. Lots of features. We talked about cold shoe adapters, quarter 20. Um, this thing really holds your phone securely. Um, it's, it's just a terrific thing. It, you can toss it in your backpack with your, you know, if you are recording, you can, you know, it's very durable, really cool. Uh, the Movo Universal Lav mic, um, you know, great microphone. I tried it last night um, uh, in, and uh, we discovered some of the stuff that we talked about yesterday. We'll, we'll cover that in just a moment. And uh, again, all you iPhone people use a lightning adapter for connection. And then all you Android folks uh, use the USB-C one. And um, again, uh, I encourage you probably, if you've got the extra cash, go buy a backup because these little guys, you can see they're little, they, they disappear. I don't know how, but they just, I think they walk away. They're like socks in the dryer. Let's put it that way. It's just one of those things. So that's your gear that you got. Great starter kit. What this does for you allows you to connect your phone to this wired microphone and uh, in a secure rig uh, that again has all these uh, capabilities to expand. So good now, better as you go. So no obsolescence. You don't have to go buy a new rig. You're, you're, you can grow and go with this. So uh, let's go. All right, so connecting things. Uh, we're gonna install the smartphone in the, in the rig. Um, sounds like it'd be simple, and it is, but there are some nuances that I wanna share with you because I've gone through it myself. And then uh, we're gonna plug the smartphone dongle into the phone so that you make sure you know how to do that. And we're gonna connect the mobile lab to the dongle just to make sure that we get the connections all tight 
um, and write. So let's go first things first. Um, so on, I've got several frames of the talk about this because this gets a little nutty maybe, but um, as you can see in this photo, there's a V cut at the top and the bottom of these, of these two clips that hold the phone. Uh, the reason they did this, pretty ingenious, and, and you'll find it on the better, better rigs that do this, is it doesn't uh, then mash the volume buttons or on off buttons or any other buttons on the edges of your phone. Because if it were flat or some other configuration, it, it could then sit on a volume button or sit on something. And sometimes it does if you don't get it right in those V's, in that V crack. And sometimes somebody will say, I don't know what's going on, but I can't hear a thing or I can't see a thing. Or I've had people record with it. It recorded fine. And then when they played it back, there was no audio. And they went, I think the microphone's messed up. And what happened was, is this clip rested on the one rocker switch that turns the volume all the way down on the phone. So they couldn't, they couldn't hear the playback. So, um, so make sure that when you get the phone in that you are uh, mindful of that, um, that V. Uh, on the other side, you've got a, um, a round uh, nut that basically screws down and secures the clamp. Now, the clamp is spring-loaded, so when you pull it up, it's going to be, it's kind of springy, so you want to make sure that you don't let it go, but you, you pull, the, pull the clamp up by this nut and then set the phone in, and then once the phone's seated, like we talked about, then you screw it down just gently. You don't have to really, yeah, Laura's got hers out. You don't have to really crank it down. It's this, it, there's enough tension in the spring unless you really drop this thing that the phone would pop out. Okay. So, um, that's that. Okay. So be mindful of the V and make sure it's not pushing on your, uh, buttons. Uh, don't, don't let anyone push your buttons, including this rig. Um, <laughs> Laura loves that one. Oh God. Anyway, again, here, here I'm showing another shot of it. Um, you can see that one of the rocker switches on my Android phone is just sitting right in that V. That's exactly how you want it. Okay. Up close and personal. Um, and then the reason I took this shot is I wanted you guys to see this, and I can also show it here if you can see my thumbnail, is that I want you to make sure that the phone has a very level set. So it's not cocked off and it, and it can happen. You can bump it and it can sit like that where it's, it's kind of like tilted a little. You want to make sure that, that this is, you know, straight so that you have the right margins that are pretty even along the bottom and top so that it's level. Okay. And that sometimes gets a little geeky because when people shoot and they're, they're hurrying, they bump it. It can, it has a little play left to right uh, in that, uh, in the rig. Uh, and then here I've connected uh, the dongle in the base of the phone in the top circle and then the bottom circle tightly snapped in the headphone connection, uh, TRRS connection from the uh, lav mic. Now you may also see, and I didn't put a circle on this, um, I actually, um, I'll show you here if you guys want to look on, the, on my little thumbnail, this little uh, quarter 20 uh, conveniently allowed uh, the battery pack of the little part of the microphone to kind of slide onto it so it wasn't like just dangling all over the place so it's kind of fun just to take it like this and slide it you know right into that little slit slot like that and then it holds it holds it like that so that it's not flipping all over the joint Isn't that kind of cool but uh and you have to kind of put your thumb underneath the the spring of this thing to kind of open it up a little bit so it can do that uh, but it's a nice place to park it if you're looking to do that. Okay. Buzz, um, do we want to make note for those that don't need to use the dongle that may not have, or that may need to use it? There are differences. Some people are questioning about that. Yeah. Now, uh, it's a good thing. Like for instance, uh, what we're talking about here, again, if you guys want to look at my thumbnail video, um, you may not need one of these two dongles. Okay. If, if you have an older phone that, that can then just take this into the headphone port and you can do that you don't even need the dongle you can go right into the headphone port with this okay and it will see it as a, an external connection um, when you start using filmic you can actually go in there and you can look at what port is what because uh, a camera or a smartphone i should say has uh, microphones at the base at the front and at the back it has three microphones not many people know that 
older models only have one at the bottom and one in the front, but there's the newer ones have three mics now. And so when you plug this in, uh, you might think that this is capturing your audio and it may not. And when we go into Filmic, I'll make sure that you know that this is the guy that's capturing the audio. Okay. Um, and you can also specify it in some of the camera apps that are out there. Uh, so it isn't just Filmic that does that, but. Um, so some of you may not have received the dongle if you don't need it, just so that you know it's not as if you're missing something. Yeah, if you didn't get the dongle, it's not the end of the world. Plug right into your headphone connection um, and you're set. Um, some of the older Android phones have the micro USB port and not a USB-C. So even if we sent you the USB-C one, you'd be like, I don't have that connector because your phone might be a few years old. Um, still doesn't preclude you doing this. You can just plug this right in the headphone jack. You're good to go. Okay. Um, one thing that um, I forget who mentioned it yesterday, uh, but they were talking about the switch. Um, and I was of the notion that I like it because there's a battery in it that we could use it in the camera mode because it would provide its own battery power. But lo and behold, the way that they've designed this technically, uh, when you plug it in, you have to have it in the off slash smartphone. Uh, position on the switch for this to light up on your phone. Uh, it's just the way they designed it. When you use it with a, a DSLR camera or some other camera, uh, then it needs to be in the camera mode. For for all intents and purposes, for our team here, um, don't even bother with the camera switch. Just keep it in the off smartphone mode and uh, it works just great. Uh, I tested it both ways yesterday or last night and uh, much to one of the other people that were on the call. That's the way it works. And it works great. Easy. Um, there's a button battery that we talked about that goes into this. Um, when you open this thing up, you unscrew it. There is a plus sign uh, indicating what side of the battery you know, is facing the right direction. If you invert that, then uh, you, you'll have some technical difficulties with this because I don't believe it works without it. Um, so there is some battery assistance happening here. but. Um, uh, you got to make sure the polarity that plus is at plus, which is the flat side, and then the rounder, uh, more sculpted side is the negative is down where the spring is. So flat side up, uh, rounded bottom part goes where the spring is. It is a bit tricky. In fact, they even tell you in the directions to use a toothpick and not something like a paper clip because you don't want to use metal when installing a battery because it could short it. So don't use something like that. Try to find a toothpick or some, you know, little piece of something to, to kind of, or use your thumbnail to kind of pull it down and, and squeeze it in. You can, it takes a little doing, but you can get it in. And once you get it in, you can screw this thing closed and you're good to go. Okay. There is a question regarding um, this between it being square or round. I have a feeling it's just another microphone um, that was sent, maybe another version of it. But it, if, as long as it has the same wiring configuration, I think it's fine. But Ladena, if you wanted to, um, talk about that. I can unmute you if I can find you. Yeah, go ahead, Lydia. Let's see. Here we go. I'm going to unmute you if you want to let us know. Okay. Can you hear me? I'm here. Yeah, we got you. Um, no, I just didn't know if there was a difference because um, I noticed yours was a uh, round and mine was square. Yeah. The, the the actual base where it has the on and off. Oh, 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 this, this part is square. Yeah, that part, yeah. Yeah, I don't think it is, LaDana. Uh, you know, they, these guys make so many of these things and they come from so many sources in China that your guess is as good as mine, as long as it, it has the same switch configuration, right? Where it says- Yeah, the, the off has smartphone with it and then on. Yeah, I, I okay. would think the same gig, so. Okay, perfect, thank you. Yeah, sure. And then another question from Susan. She says, should she take her phone out of the case before she puts it into the rig? No, actually, uh, you don't have to. Um, the moment case that I showed you uh, without a phone, that's the one I use on mine. Um, it's not a super thick one. Uh, now, if you have a thicker one, it shouldn't matter because you can pull this back. See how much, uh, well, you can't see from this side. Maybe you can from this side. See how there's, so, there's a lot more room here in the, slot to move it up. So if you have a chunkier, um, uh, you know, case. Now, the only thing about it is if the case is thicker uh, width-wise, uh, then you might have a little problem getting it to seat itself, uh, you know, well into this. And if that's the case, then I would suggest you take it out of the case to put it in this because you certainly don't want to have this and have it flop out 
and crack your screen or do some crazy thing like that. So if it's loose and jiggly, that's what Susan's saying. Is it Susan? Yeah. Um, then I would suggest taking it out of the case to use it in this configuration. I know it's a little tough. What I would look for is there's a company called Totally, and I'll try to put this in the field notes after this, um, and Totally makes these super thin but really durable cases that are not expensive. I mean, they're really, they're like, I think 19 or 30 bucks or some crazy number. It's not like 50 or 100 or some crazy thing like Otter. Um, and if you need a thinner case for doing what you're doing, you might want to look at that. Uh, is it an iPhone, Susan? Yes, okay. And Jennifer, my fell out because I have an extra bat. Oh, you have an extra battery. It's heavy. Yeah. Um, so Jennifer has a different problem than Susan. She has a, a battery pack, which then causes this great amount of thickness and will definitely keep this thing from sitting in, the, in these red, uh, you know, uh, carved out areas. Um, so um, <laughs> I think he might be hurt to my phone wallet. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Um, yeah, it, if if you can get clearance enough to to do it, this thing doesn't have a ton of tolerance for super thick cases. So um, uh, I'll make that recommendation for Totally. You can take a look at their site. They've got cases for every kind of phone you can think of. Um, but, um, you know, there's no escaping that part. And you don't want your phone to fall out and get broken. Okay. All right. Let's move along here. Um, Again, we talked about the Movo uh, mic and the dongles. Um, and then connecting it, make sure you snap it in flush. Uh, I've had people get it in like one portion deep and they're like, I'm not getting, a, you know, stereo or it's not coming through right. Make sure it just snaps in firmly. You don't have to herk it in, just snap it in. Um, and that's, that's about it on the microphone. It's nothing really super complicated. Um, you know, just keep it in the off mode and and you're good to go. Um, one thing I will advise you to do, and this is something that you should really be mindful of, people do this, I don't know what happens, but it does happen, is they'll walk over your cables, and you walk over, and they inevitably will get it stuck on their shoe or caught on their toe or whatever, and they will yank your rig and everything galley west. I mean, it just goes. So be be, be sure that that when you've got somebody you're shooting that that you don't have people kind of coming through because it it's going to, take everything and just pull it out of your hands. So make sure of that uh, just to be, cause this is a 25 foot cord and you know, you'll be all excited that you don't have to, you know, you can have somebody standing back, but then people then don't, they just don't pay attention and they're going to, they could trip. Um, one thing I will tell you is the 25 feet of cord that's in here or 20 foot of cord. Um, if you're using a, a wide angle, a pro lens, like we're talking about, or, or even if you have an iPhone, uh, 11 Pro uh, or Max, um, you can shoot tighter and don't have to have a ton of cord out like that. So uh, just keep in mind that if you, if you change your lens style, you won't have to have all 20 feet of cord out. Otherwise, you're going to have somebody down the hall before you can really get them in frame. Okay, um, let's talk a little bit about this. We're not going to take a deep dive on this because in your field notes, I've got some information about Filmic Pro. Um, as you've heard me rave about it before, just terrific app, pro features, total controls that, you know, you wouldn't even think you needed. And then you get, I have teachers come up and go, hey, did you see that you can do this? And I'm like, oh yeah, I knew that in my life. You know, I mean, it's like, it, it, you can get real geeky with this. Now, here's the good thing. We're not going to go do a big gigantic training with you guys on this because I'm going to give you a site uh, and it's going to be in your field notes that you can, there's like, no, I'm not joking. There's probably a dozen YouTube videos that are short duration. They're real quick and easy. The guy is this gentleman, British gentleman, that does a really great job of, of narrating it. And you can just watch them over and over again and just play with your phone. And, get, and you're just, it's, it's geek city. It's fun. It's a, it's, a, it's a lot of fun. You wouldn't think it was fun. You're thinking, oh, God. But it's, it's, and then you only have to watch the ones. If you want to just get the basics, God bless you. Do the basics. Then you don't have to go deep. But it can, you can peel that onion a lot. So I'll give you that. Um, it's just designed for video. It really is. And uh, there are pro video guys that have been in this thing way, way long before any of us were probably born that think this thing is the money. I mean, and they're saying, they're raving about it. And they can't even believe that a, a smartphone can shoot like this. Well, it can. So it's pretty cool. Um, so advanced to beginner is uh, kind of the gig. All right. Now, oh, yeah. I don't want to disappoint. Everybody see this? Can I get an amen out there? 
Come on. All right, here it is. Now the fun part. We're going to have you guys write a short paragraph. Nothing biblical. Don't get geeky. Just a short paragraph about how you'd use a shotgun microphone. Okay. And uh, here, let me show you what, what the heck did I do with it. Oh, here it is. Like this bad boy. That's a shotgun mic. Okay. It's a cold shoe adapter. Works with your rig because it goes slides right on. Plugs right in. Look at that. Right into your dongle. Good to go. Oh, wait, look at this. I only see one screen. Oh, okay. You don't see my, oh, here, let me go live then. All right, one second. Because I just want to, I don't want to lose the moment. It's too much fun. Uh, stop sharing. Okay. So here, got me now? Who was that who said, oh, one. You, you good, one? Amen? Yeah, one's good. I think he is. Okay. So um, this is, this is a uh, powered shotgun microphone. And these are good uh, for when you can't clip somebody. Okay, um, so uh, that's, that's what this is. And we're gonna have you write a paragraph, Let me go back to our wonderful slide presentation, um, and tell us how you'd use one. And here's why. Because we're gonna give away two of these bad boys right here. The new, newer, or new, newer, as some people call it, the CM15 microphone comes with its uh, foam windscreen, uh, below that, they call it a fur windshield. It's also known as a dead cat. Um, you can figure that one out yourself. Uh, the dead cat is good when you're in high wind outside. Uh, it just, it's better than the foam uh, sleeve. Uh, it has a carrying case, um, has all kinds of nifty controls, use AA batteries, um, and uh, it'll work with your rigs, um, all that. So two winners, uh, and just tell us how you'd use it. If you, if you could get it, and two people will. So we're going to give some love. We're gonna, it's not just, you know, drill and kill here. You know, we're going to have a good time. So you can use one of these. They're really handy. Uh, and you can have it mounted uh, on your rig, on your, on your uh, you know, your uh, Ulanzi rig. And then when, and you can switch, just unplug the, uh, the lav and stick this in or have this one in. And then when you think you can do an, an on air interview type thing where you clip somebody, then you can unplug this guy. But either way, you'll have the ability of, of doing some, uh, some really cool stuff with this guy. Okay. All right. How would you like them to submit the paragraphs? Well, that's up to their instructor. <laughs> <laughs> um, they, uh, how do you think would be the best implementation? I mean, they're asking whether they could just type something, a few sentences in the chat box now, or could they submit a, a paragraph to, um, to an email address that we could, perhaps to Julio? <laughs> yeah. And then he, he could, could combine them all for us and send them? Yeah. Yeah. Why don't, why don't they uh, get Dr. G there to, <laughs> sorry, Julio, poor guy. Um, he, he paid, he got more than he bargained for in this deal. Uh, yeah. If you want to just send them all to his address, has everybody got his email? Right. Julio, you can put it in the, the chat box for us. And then um, everyone has until midnight tonight. Can we say buzz? Um, well, since we're not convening till Friday, I'll give them till how about noon tomorrow? That way, if you're going out having a midweek drink, you don't have to work with this. You can do it in the morning, you know, when you're having your coffee. But, but you know, just just think about oh, what's this? If I had one of these microphones, I would use. Oh, somebody's already Jerry's already writing. <laughs> That's cool, Jerry. I'm I'm glad. Okay, but wait a minute, we're not done yet. We're not done. If you don't want the shotgun mics, let's just say ah, I wouldn't use that in a month of Sundays. You don't have to write. You don't have to but there's more fun. I want you to write a short paragraph about how you would use a pro style studio microphone to do podcasts like this rig that you see me get on. Okay. Um, so for those out there uh, who are feeling the love about doing podcasting in, in narrative instruction is one of the kind of things that we talked about doing that kind of thing. Um, how would you do that? You know, and, and this can be, uh, uh, Laura and I were talking about it earlier. It can be something that's socially driven, uh, you know, goodwill driven uh, for the greater good, whatever, you know, uh, whatever, you know, whatever you think. Certainly in the context of education, we want it to impact instruction and learning. So I've had some context to that. It just has to be a paragraph about how you would use a pro style mic 
to do podcasting. And uh, this is it. Not bad, huh? Not bad. That's real gold, by the way, on the end. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> but it looks like real gold. Um, but you get the whole boom arm. <coughs> excuse me. And uh, a shock mount, uh, foam windscreen, uh, plug, to plug it into your computer, uh, strap that bad boy on your desk, and you're going to be you're going to sound as good as this or better probably because I don't sound that great. Buzz, can they write a paragraph for both or do they have to choose one or the other? Well, I'd like the people that really want to do podcasting to do this. Uh, but I don't know. In the namesake of fairness, I, uh, what do you think? You, you advise me. You're, you're way smarter than I am. <laughs> so go ahead. You... Um, well, I, if they're going to write one, they might as well write two. All right. <laughs> All right. The same email, of course. Yeah. So um, just let us know which one is for which. And They're then different. one winner for um, the three winners will be three different individuals, however. One yep. winner can't win both. You got it. Now, the good news is, is the winner will give me their uh, address if they feel so comfortable in doing so. And I will ship this directly to your residence of some sort. Um, I did check availability on these, and since there's been a real tight availability on stuff, both of these look available. Uh, I think they were shippable by, one was like, could have it by Friday, and the other one said they could have it by early next week. So in either event, um, these, you won't be waiting till you turn, you know, 60 to get this. So um, anyway, so they're available. But we thought it'd be fun because we definitely want you to take what you're learning and put it to work. and. Um, if you become a famous pad, podcaster, Laura and I would like some royalties back on the back end. Um, so anyway, that's the I'd gig. like to mention that this is all funded by Buzz for, for you students that he wanted to give back to all of you in some way. So um, I'd like to thank Buzz for his generosity. Hey, listen, we, we need love in this country. <laughs> I'm going to do my part. Um, but uh, anyhow, I just wanted to kind of think about... Uh, you know, I was raised as a kid about, you know, do unto others as you like to unto you, you, the golden rule thing. And that's how I live. And so I'm really happy to have all you guys here and, um, and uh, doing this thing. And uh, so these are the two things. So write something cool. Doesn't, again, doesn't have to be biblical. And we'll get to it on Friday at 2 p.m. Uh, we have uh, four hours of, uh, oh, wait, I mean, two hours of time. And uh, It'll be fun to kind of uh, get into all of the rest of what we have to do, but we'll do a drawing. We'll have some fun and uh, conclude our week. Thank you so much, Buzz. I so much appreciate your giving your time and expertise to us today. And uh, we'll look forward to reading these paragraphs and seeing everyone on Friday. By the way, are we limiting to only those that have attended the sessions can write the paragraphs? So those that are not here today, I cannot write the paragraphs. So it's got to be some type of a, you know, a little benefit. <laughs> yeah, for those that really had to listen to me for two days, they deserve this. I mean, I wish you could give one to everybody. Um, but uh, yeah, so uh, whatever you say, Laura, that's, that's good with me. Um, yeah. If you have any questions in the meantime, since we have a day gap, um, send those over to to uh, Big G or to Laura, and uh, they'll get them to me, and I'll respond as, as best I can. And uh, if not, we'll get to it on uh, 2 p.m. Friday. And uh, be safe, everybody, and we will see you again. Thanks for the time today, of course. It was great being with all of you. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye. Thanks, Laura. <laughs>